بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين من بعد. Can you just close the glass door because a lot of people start coming out of Maghrib time and gets loud. Uh, today, inshallah, we're going to talk about a, uh, the limits of selflessness and miserliness. Like, what does that actually mean? How do I know that I am a miser? You know, don't, don't lock it, uh, Ali. Okay. okay, good. Like, you know, how do I know if I'm miserly? How do I know if I'm, I'm being selfless, right? This is something that's really important for us to understand. You know, is it something that is measurable? And if it is measurable, how do we measure it? How do we define it? How do I know if I've fallen into miserliness or greed or how do i know if i'm actually being selfless so um here imam Uzari he opens this section um with his introduction saying that okay well you can go and look in the sharia and the sharia very clearly says that you shouldn't be miserly right you shouldn't be stingy like you shouldn't have these characteristics like these aren't healthy ways to to be with your money and to be with your wealth but what what does that actually look like right you know how, how do you actually define that how do I know if I'm being stingy, right? And, and and we know that you shouldn't be stingy, but what does it actually mean to be stingy? Uh, we'll talk, there's more graphs today. <laughs> uh, and, and he says like even perspective, this is something that's really important. He said like when, when we look at our wealth, we always think that we're what? Like we, we always think we're generous. Like every time we give money, we're like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm generous. And then when we see, we look at what other people do. Uh, and I, I remember like this was, <laughs> What happened was uh, there was a brother, he came and, uh, mashallah, that brother was like a millionaire. And he gave like $10,000 like in, in donation or sadaqah or whatever. Another brother, he goes and he's like, that's it? I, w like, I, was, I was furious. Like I, <laughs> I got so angry. And the first thing I like, and it was like, I, I, should, I need to learn to control myself too. But it was like, it was like a knee jerk reaction. I was like, oh wow, how much did you give? <laughs> And he was, like, he was like, you know, that's not the point, or da da da. And I was like, it's subhanallah, it's amazing how quick we are to, you know, what I mean, like how we view ourselves and how we view how we view others. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. That's not enough. No, it's that's that's what I'm saying. Like it's it's never enough, right? Like when we look at what other people give, it's like, oh no, it's enough. Like he should do more. And, and it's like, okay, well, I'm not, I'm not in the same position, but I'm in a position, right, to, to help. It's like, okay, what percentage of my net worth am I giving away? All right. Um, so I, I think number one, like the, the important, like one of the most important elements of Tezkia is, is what, like do, doing that introspection, right? Looking at what I'm doing, not so much on what other others are. So here he's saying that, all right. Is is it just the fact that an individual holds on to their wealth? Like, is that what defines being stingy? And he brings some examples. Uh, and he says, like, all right, so if I hold on to my wealth, does that in and of itself make me stingy? And he's saying, well, sometimes, right? That's, that's not always the case. Uh, but what if I give away some of my wealth? Does that make me giving? No, not really, right? Sometimes. Right. I, I'm saying like, okay, like if I gave, if, if and, and we'll use the example of somebody who's as wealthy as Jeff Bezos. If I'm like, you know what, I'm going to give $10 to homelessness. Would you call me generous? <laughs> Say, mashallah, look at what he's doing for the, for, look at what he's, look at what he's doing for the ummah. Right? <laughs> it's like, or, or us, like if I gave, if I get, if I put like $5 in the sadqa box, would you be like, mashallah. Look at this brother, so generous. It, would that be a definition of generous? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm saying it, it can be, for sure. But do we usually associate those one-time donations as like defining someone as being generous? You'd, for sure. Mm -hmm. You sure, but how, how, what percentage of people is it gonna be their last $10? It's very small, but I'm, I'm saying like, you know, barring impossible situations, there's like <laughs> the, the logistical, imp, imp, like uh, the statistical improbabilities. In general, like those is, like individual instances don't really define a person. Um, and, and that's the only point that Ghazali is trying to make here. Just because you give some money, that doesn't make you generous. Or just because I hold on to some money, it doesn't make me stingy. 
So there ha there's a gauge that's in the middle there somewhere, right? What, what does that gauge look like? And, and he spends a lot of this chapter actually discussing that and helping define that. Um, so he says, when it comes to being stingy, if I only give what I'm obligated to, if I give my zakat every year and I give my family their rights and I don't give anything else, am I stingy? Yeah, I'm stingy. Okay, that's that's one way of looking at it, right? Like, so I can't I can't necessarily say that this person is blameworthy, but would he be generous, right? So we wouldn't call him. It's not necessary that I call him stingy, but it's also not necessary that I call him generous. Okay, and he 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 explores some of that. So he gives a few examples here. He said, if somebody gives me meat, right? So like, mashallah, Ibrahim one day he brought some uh, some bosas. And I was like, man, these are, I was like, man, these look excellent. And I was, and I say to Ibrahim, I was like, you know, what? I'd like to give you a gift, Echi. And I give him back the samosas that he brought. Would that make me generous? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. If someone gives me a gift, right? Somebody, someone gives me a gift, and like I give that same gift back to them. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna give you something. <laughs> <laughs> Regifter. <laughs> I will. Uh, I, uh, I'm assuming none of you watch Seinfeld, but anyway, there's a. <laughs> this is the, oh man. no no. <laughs> so there, there's a, there's a um. I can't even challenge that. So anyway, <laughs> so giving a gift back to that person is not going to be considered generous, right? That's that's not generosity. Um, if it becomes, if it's difficult for me to do that thing, if it's difficult for me to give, is that is that a good line of defining? So if I'm in a situation where it's difficult for me to give, right? Like my, my heart is like actually preventing me from giving and I overcome that, does that make me generous? So for some, for some people, that could be like a dollar, right? Right? No, I'm saying we're not talking about where the person is in their journey, right? There's, there, there's a difference in that. Like, is it a good step? Absolutely, right? I, I think that's great. Like, if it's difficult for me to give a dollar, but I still give that dollar, then I'm taking that step, right? I'm, I'm actually advancing myself and I'm bettering myself. But we're talking about generosity now, right? It's not necessary. That I, I've, it's not necessary. I've reached the point where I'm now generous. It's like you know, well, you know, how much did you give in the last year? Well, I don't want to uh, brag, but I gave one dollar and eighty-three cents. And <laughs> you know, in <laughs> in, in right, I'm sorry, <laughs> right? It, it's like that. Those my, minus the processing fee. Yeah, yeah. Are you going to bring the logistical improbability again, bud? <laughs> yeah. Sure. No. I, so here, like, I, you're, you're absolutely right, right? You know, can you? Does it have? Is it limited to wealth? No, it's not, right? Can I be generous with my love, with my kindness, right? There's there's different ways to uh, express that. Yes. Sure. I mean, so the the thing is, we're not. There, there's a process that's there, right? Do do I want to get to a point where eventually, inshallah, I am generous? Yes, absolutely. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa taala make us all generous. But like on that journey, like where do I get to the point where I'm I'm escaping stinginess, right? And then there becomes like this balance point where it's like, okay, I'm fulfilling my obligations, but now I've reached a point where I'm into charitable and generous. How do we define that? Right, and, that, and that's the whole discussion here. Um, and in those initial stages, like I mean, this whole process there can be pain throughout, right? Right, we can have that sting. Even when I get to the point where I'm at the obligation point, for example, and I'm not, I haven't become generous yet. Can it sting that person to enter the generous stage? It can. There's nothing wrong with that sting, right? And uh, Ghazali, he actually he actually discusses this and he talks about this. Um, I'm sorry. 
Yeah, right. There's, there's different ways. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I, I, I guess I guess a good question is like, all right, well, why then why focus so much on wealth? It, like because of the the status that it has, and, and not just that, it's it's. It's, it's visible, right? It's easier to gauge giving wealth than it is giving love, for example, right? It, lo giving love is it's like a very abstract type of, of concept, but giving wealth is something that you can actually, you can, it's physically, you can, you're able to do it. So I, I think it's met, that's why it's so representative of this idea. Huh? Yeah, there's, it's, it's a very limited resource. I mean, I guess love can be limited too, right? For some people, for me, Allah <laughs> Akbar. Uh, and if I do, um, like for example, so the the other scenario he actually brings is like, okay, the uh, family has a problem. The wife goes to the judge and she's like, he doesn't give me enough money. And the judge is like, okay, you have to give her a two hundred dollar allowance every every couple of weeks, for example. The month ends, and she wants to buy flowers for the house. And those flowers cost five dollars, and she's at one hundred ninety-eight. And he's like, "Nope, you've gone over your limit." Right? <laughs> he's very, he's very principled. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> You've been listening to me, mashallah. No, <laughs> no, but w would that like what would we say about this? Like, is is that being uh, is that being generous? We would actually, we would actually consider that person to be what, like miserly, right? It'd be cheap. It's like, bro, it's like, it's just a couple bucks, dude. Like, just you know, just, just spend the money. It's like, okay, yeah, the judge said this, but it's like, are you, are you going to go to the, uh, you know, when you go to get stuff weighed out, are you going to start taking out grains of rice, you know, to, <laughs> to make sure that you get like, you know, your entire money's worth? Like, it's like, no, nope, like not yet. I, I still get three more grains, right? And that that is actually being very miserly. Or that's actually being very cheap. And then these are those are things that need to be avoided. So it's the same thing here, right? So again, he's he's bringing up this question again. Okay, well, these are situations where you're actually giving what you're supposed to give, right? But even in these situations, you would still be called stingy. So there has to be a better way to define it, and there has to be a better way to engage with this. And he says the same also applies to generosity. Right? There's no, there's no definitive line in any of these things. Like just because I'm giving these things, it doesn't make me what? Generous. So how do you define this generosity? How do you define the stinginess? And and again, this is something that he'll he'll engage with a, a little bit more. Uh, he uses this verse, uh, which I think is is a beautiful example of it. He says, "Wala tajal yada ka maglula tan ila unoqiq, wala tapsuta ha kul basta fataqdu manuman mahsura." He says, "Do not be so tight-fisted, for you will be blameworthy. Nor so open-handed, for you will end up blameworthy and destitute." Like, what does that mean? Don't be. If you translate this literally, "la tajal yada ka maglula tan ila unoqiq," don't put your hand here. This is this is how it's literally translated, huh? So like I'm doing tap weed. Right? Uh, no, <laughs> don't put your hand here, and don't open it fully. What what is Allah talking about? That's impermissible for us to walk around like this, huh? Uh, don't be cheap, uh, and and don't be a spendthrift. Ahsant. right? Don't be cheap and don't be a spendthrift. Beware. Be in the be in the middle, All right? Be balanced. Be in the middle. So I mean, and this is. If you want to talk about like a golden rule for financial advice, here it is. It's right here. Now, how do you, how do you define that? Again, it becomes very subjective, right? And it's very personal. Allah subhanahu wa taala. You know, and, and and this is something that's really interesting. And again, we'll we'll touch on it and we'll get to it, inshallah. The next ayah uh, that he shares, he says, "Waladina ida anfaqu lam yusrifu wa lam yaktoru wa kana bain darika qawama." That who and their spending are neither extravagant nor stingy, but maintain. Moderation. Again, this idea of moderation. How do we attain that? How do we get to that level? How do we get to that point? So he's saying here, oh man, I forgot to, uh, the animation. I forgot to do the last part. It's okay. It'll still be good, inshallah. So there's there's a balance that needs to be here, right? There's a balance between giving and taking. There's a balance between spending and saving. Um, and what determines that balance? Okay. 
Can, can we, how, wait, wait, how, what determines that balance? <laughs> I'm sorry. The, the, oh, the daily and the monthly expenditures? No, no. But what, what determines that? It's going to be <laughs> in the culture. <laughs> and what do, what do I initially use and how do I, how do I gauge that? Because there's a third element that's here. This, one's, this, one, this next one you guys will like. It's like really cute. Oh, what do you think about that? That's pretty slick, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. I do, I do. You know what I mean? I do. I do have a heart. So, <laughs> uh -huh. I've, I've been doing this for like years, bro. Where you been? It's, <laughs> so, like the the tongue of the scale, right? So, the, the when you have a, a scale, this this is called the tongue of that scale, right? That actually brings balance. Um, where where is the tongue? The tongue is is the heart, right? The heart is the one is the balance point between these two things. Yeah, it wasn't meant to be just a picture of a heart. It actually, has meaning. <laughs> and and what goes into the heart to help make that determination? It's going to be the shitty on culture. And, and and what does that mean? And what does that look like? Right? There's different ways that this is going to manifest. I think the Sharia part is pretty clear, right? I don't I don't think there's like you cannot spend on anything haram. There are certain things that we're obligated to do. There are certain spaces that we have to make sure that we're utilizing or we're spending money in the right way. All of these things are very clearly defined in the Sharia. But there's also another component here, which is a culture, right? So when we talk about murua, when we talk about chivalry, when we talk about ha having distinguished character, what are some things that are expected? Like so, for example. Um, in certain cultures, if I go and visit a family that just had a baby, what is the cultural expectation? Again, this is not a shadowy one, right? This is a cultural expectation. What is the culture? Did I bring a gift? Does it matter like how how expensive or how cheap that gift is? No, it doesn't. Like I should try to at least bring something small, like a, like a token. You know, give something to take part in the happiness in that. And if I don't bring that gift, guess what? They're not, not just rude. It's considered what? It's considered being stingy. Hmm. Right. Um, another part of different cultures, the first time I'm visiting someone's house, what is very common? To, to, to like bring a gift, right? Bring a small gift. Again, a token. Uh, somebody, somebody moves in to the house, like somebody moves into a new home. Like you bring a congratulatory gift. All of like again, are these defined in the Sharia? Does does Allah say? Does the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi did they ever say like, oh, when there's a, you know when a person moves into a new home, make sure you take a gift? <laughs> huh? Do do we have anything like that? Huh? I'm so again, this is a cultural thing, right? In in and if you actually think about it, sweets, sweets aren't that expensive, right? They're not. It's not like a huge demand. Like so, what do you do? You take some sweets. You go to somebody's house. Why? Because you want to show them that you're taking part in their their happiness. And it's the same thing when they have a child or whatever the case might be. And other, Eid. What happens on Eid? If you what? You don't give anything? Then you're stingy. Then you're stingy. You're cheap. Don't be cheap. Take a gift. You, you work at Home Depot. Take, take some wood. Do you know how expensive wood is? <laughs> huh? D that's fine, but yeah, some people will argue that they're like, "Well, it's not the, the, the Prophet ﷺ didn't say so, right?" Like, how do we respond to that? Customs part of the religion. Customs part of the religion. The Prophet ﷺ, why didn't he dress like an Indian? Why didn't he dress like a European? Why? Could could he? Could, could, he was Arab, right? And not just that, he didn't want to what? He didn't want to appear, appear like weird and strange. He actually bought pants. Do you guys know this? There's a hadith where he actually bought pants and he didn't wear them. Why? Huh? What, no, he wanted to show that they were okay to purchase. He actually wanted, he wanted to show that they're okay to wear too, but the reason he didn't wear it is because he didn't want to appear strange. Right? So. No, he purchased them. He didn't wear them. Yeah. So... And, and again, it's important to maintain and understand what cultural norms are. He saw Islam, he never uncovered his head. Why, you know what I mean? Like, why stick to that custom? Why follow it? Because it's an Arab thing. Like, for the Arabs, it's like the opposite of American culture. In American culture, covering the head is actually considered rude, right? Like, well, I mean, you guys are probably, it's, it's less now. It's less now. Um, but, like, uh, at least when I, when I was growing up, like, you know, millions of years ago, there's, um, <laughs> Like when you went to school, like they, and if you were wearing a hat, guess what you had to do? 
you had to take it off. Right? It, was, it was considered disrespectful. Yeah. Um, and e even in some workplaces today, like you can, there are a lot of corporate offices, like you can walk in like with tattoos, which wasn't acceptable previously, but it's acceptable now, but you still can't walk in with a, with a baseball cap. You're not going to sit down at a corporate meeting with a baseball cap on, right? It's not why, huh? I, I mean, that's, that's IR. They got to, they got to, they, they got to market like 24 hours a day, man. But huh? outside, they take them off as soon as they go, they enter indoors. Yeah, it's a sign of respect, and e even when they greet. No, I'm saying like so. Even if you look back at like, um, even if you like read about like 30s, 40s, 50s culture, they, they would tip the hat, right? Why? Think about that, because having the bare head is a sign of. It's actually a sign of respect, right? So it's it's the opposite of a lot of the the Arab cultures. So the Arab cultures, keeping keeping your head covered was actually considered respectful. Yeah. Sure. So where do we, oh, that's a great question. At what point do I not listen to the cultural expectations? When it goes against the Sharia, that's a very clear one, right? And what else? Yeah, okay, how do I design, decide what's excessive? Well, I mean, there are things that are like going out of the way to buy some sweets. It brings a little bit of difficulty, right? Right, so it's, I can't just use difficulty because then I won't do anything. <laughs> it's like it's like why do you have a tube? I refuse to chew. <laughs> it's too difficult, huh? It, I saw, it's something that becomes a financial burden. H how do I determine what's a financial burden? That's for me to decide, right? I I can decide at that point. Like I can't afford this. Like this this is silly. It's like I have I have fifty cousins that live around me, and I'm I'm visiting them twice a week, and I have to take a gift every single time. Like I, just <laughs> you know, this is this is not sustainable. Like I can, you know what I mean? I can't I can't keep doing this. It's like, or every time someone has a birthday, like, there we go. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm going to a birthday twice a week. Yeah, yes. Uh-huh. SubhanAllah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, but, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I'm in, in like, if, if those things, if they're preventing things from happening, like, like something small, like some fruits. You know what I mean? It doesn't, that, that's the thing. I have to take, the, I think the cultural expectation for a gift is fine. I don't, I don't have a problem with it. The problem I have is like, okay, no, it has to be past a certain dollar amount, right? That, that's where it becomes a problem. But if I'm going to someone's house and I'm taking, for example, oranges. Taking oranges, it's a gift, right? I probably didn't spend more than three, four dollars on this. Am I doing anything wrong? No, I maintain the cultural values. Everybody likes oranges, right? Like, <laughs> it's like everybody benefits in that way. So, when it becomes a personal burden, right? That's that's definitely you know, when it when it contradicts the Sharia. That's all. Um, other cu cultural expectations might not necessarily be financial, but they could be time. It's like, no, we have to have dinner as a family every single Saturday night. It's like, okay, I mean, sometimes I'm gonna go out with my family, dude. Like, I <laughs> why why do I have to visit my family every single Saturday night? Like, why don't we need to have dinner together? Um, so I think those, those kind of things, like those personal boundaries, they, they should be drawn, um, by the individual, right? What they think are so burdensome, uh, for some people it's like, nah, once a week is, that's not even enough. Like we, we need to meet each other like three times a week. Again, every family is different. Every family is different. Every individual is different. Uh, and I think that's why the Sharia allows for that, that fluidity in terms of like how we define our own boundaries in order to understand how we interact and how we deal with others. What about them? It becomes excessive, so like again, it's the same thing. Is it, does it violate the Sharia? And is it does it become a personal burden? Um, sometimes it becomes a personal burden. It's like there, um, for for me at least, when I when I visit Pakistan, there's just too many weddings to attend. Like I <laughs> I, just, I just can't right, I just can't attend them all. And it's like all right, what do you do? You have to pick and choose. And then you, what do you do with the others? Like you, you call them and you excuse yourself and be like, hey, listen, there's just like way too many, huh? Huh? Yeah, it's like, or you know, if or if you want to take the extra step, like send a gift, right? That that's also a possibility. There there are different ways to kind of manage these things and managing your expectations. Or it's like, all right, who do I give priority to? Okay, I'm going to give priority to the closest relation, right? And you you can go from there. It it really depends. Or, I mean, sometimes we have situations. It's like, okay, I have a cousin and my best friend getting married, right? 
Like, who do you, who do you choose? And it's the same. It could be the same day, same time. How do you make that decision? It's tough, right? You know, and I'm I'm not sharing these because like I necessarily have the answer to these things, but how to understand and how to navigate relationships is something that's really important. Like, it's a really important skill that that every single one of us needs needs to learn how to do. And at this point, it's like, okay, well, where do I excuse myself? Um, I, I have a cousin who's been married and divorced like multiple times. All right, like how many times am I supposed to get, take a gift? <laughs> like, no, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's doing it for the kids. Is that what, is that what it is? So, uh, so I I was like, you know, forget this, dude. I'm like taking any more gifts, man. Like it's like this is silly. Like I don't I don't know how long this is, you know, because in the back of your in the, in the, yeah, <laughs> like because in the back of your head, what do you think? He's like, man, how long is this one gonna last, right? <laughs> like if you're on like your fourth marriage, it's just like, bro, okay, you know, you just attend and it's like, okay, it's a good social gathering and you meet, but it's like I'm not I'm not bringing any more gifts, huh? Yeah, the quality of the weddings has definitely <laughs> has definitely gone down. <laughs> it's just good. It's, yeah, it's like uh, okay. Well, I'm, def I'm definitely seeing a decline in quality here. I guess the quality of gifts <laughs> hasn't gotten any better. Uh, I, yeah, is that what it is? I should ask for the gift back. Who do I ask it from, though? Right? <laughs> that does it create another fight? <laughs> right, another problem. A lot of stuff. A lot protect us. Uh, so there are different expectations also, right? So we have different people in different situations. Uh, the rich, uh, what the expectations from them are very different from the poor. There are different expectations on how I do business and how I deal with my guests. Like, you know, how, I'm, how am I going to be uh, generous in those situations? How am I going to be stingy in those situations? There's a difference between food and dress, right? Sometimes some people are more generous with their food. Some people are more generous when they purchase gifts, you know, and dress for others. Um, in different relationships, right? So how close, like pro the proximity of that relationship, am I going to be more generous with my close friends and my close family versus, you know, people who are a little bit more distant than me? Uh, so, you know, all of these definitely do have a role. So what does it mean to be stingy, right? Which is basically what, yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. In terms of? that's the thing like they're very abstract right it's very subjective you know the the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he didn't he didn't tell us like anything less than 2 dirham is cheap right we don't have anything like that um the, the allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he talks about money he just talks about gold and silver he he doesn't say like five pieces of gold is generous and three pieces of silver is cheap like we we don't have these definitions so that's why there are different expectations that's what we're trying to figure out we're get, we'll get to it, inshallah. <laughs> we're, we're working on it. We're getting there. So what does it mean to be stingy? And he's saying that there are different definitions. Different scholars have come up with different definitions on, on how to kind of navigate this issue. So he's saying the one who prevents that which should not be. So what does that mean? That if an individual is is going to, if there's an opportunity for me to give money and I don't give it, if I'm preferring to preserve my wealth, what is it that I'm preser preserving it over? What am I choosing it over? And if it's anything that is shari or anything that is, would be considered undignified or or something that's against the adat, the taqalid, then in that situation, what is to be given preference? Me saving my money or the sharia? The sharia is always given preference. In terms of, so over here, remember, we're talking about preservation of wealth. So over here, if I have to give for a shari cause, right? I want to be very specific in my wording. If I'm giving for a shari cause, but it will cause me to lose my wealth, what do I give preference to? Like, I lose all my wealth. I'm sorry, let me, let me word it differently. I'll, I'll fall into debt. I, uh -huh. I'll fall into debt, so what do I do? I put my family first. Do, do, do you guys see like, how we're kind of gauging that a little bit? So let me give an example that's coming up. Uh, how Eid uh, al-Adha, what is a very common thing that a lot of people do? They slaughter. They, people will slaughter to the point where they're ready to go in debt to purchase the animal. How many of you are aware of this? So in many Eastern cultures, they have payment plans with an exorbitant amount of interest. <laughs> yes, <laughs> to get a loan to purchase an animal to slaughter. Huh? If, so imagine somebody purchasing a prize animal for slaughter. 
So we're not talking about like the two hundred fifty dollar goats. <laughs> like we we're we're talking about like. So do you you guys know how much like a, a regular steer cost? Like a steer. A steer is like a cow. Huh? Twelve hundred is about starting for for a relatively small thin cow. When you get into when you get into good cows, you're talking about fifteen hundred, closer to eighteen hundred dollars. If you're talking about prize cows, you're talking about thousands of dollars. Hmm? Like wagyu is the meat, right? So those are the cuts. That's a little bit different, and the way that they treat the animal for sure. But just in general, the better the animal, the more demanding it is. So for example, if I have a unique color for a cow, that's healthy. You're, you're talking anywhere between five and eight thousand dollars. Like so. It's, it becomes very easy for someone who doesn't, they have a living wage. How do they purchase this animal? They have to take a loan. Why do they have to take a loan? Do they feel they're fulfilling some Shari'i requirement? It's actually mostly cultural pressure, being honest. There's a lot of cultural pressure for people to purchase these animals. It, it, it's crazy. Like, um, So what happens in Karachi, at least, uh, when I was there, about three weeks before Eid to a month before Eid, they have what's called the like Eidgah. And they have like these tents that they set up in these empty areas. And everybody, all these farmers just bring their animals. And it's crazy. Like, it's like a zoo. Like you, <laughs> you literally walk, it's like a zoo and people are just selling these animals. And then they'll always have like the, like five to six prize cows. And who, per you know who purchases those cows generally? Huh? Well, not always the poor people, but usually the ma like the big landowners. So the big landowners are go. Some of these guys don't even pray, like just being very honest. Why? It's just a show, right? It's just a show. It's just a competition, and just to show off the animal that they've purchased. Um, it's very unfortunate. Like it's it's a really bad culture that's developed around this Allah Uh but. Uh, yeah, so like giving preference to these things, and, and the reason I shared that again, like I'm sorry for the long tangent, but <laughs> the reason that I share that is like these people, yeah, is is there a shara'i reason? Yes. Is it justified? No, right? Or me giving sadaqa, right? It's a shara'i reason for me to give sadaqa at the expense of my children. No, right? That That's never going to be justified. So it's important to note there's no specific amount, and this is something that we had mentioned, right? There's no there's no hadith that said, oh, anything less than one piece of gold is considered stingy, right? We don't have any specific amounts for that. Why? Because everybody's situation is unique and different. So it's possibly defined as holding money from a purpose, even though that purpose is more important than preserving wealth. Like we had mentioned, right? So when I was talking about the different reasons for holding on to wealth, is this a reasonable definition? I think it's okay. Like I don't I don't think it's too bad. How he illustrates it, though, coming up, there's this is I think this is a great way of kind of illustrating it and helping us understand what it actually looks like. So over here, uh, if we talk about preserving religion or dignity or you know being precise, like I said, counting those grains of rice, that's one way of kind of envisioning it and helping us understanding it. And then over here, he'll define it uh, again. So and he says that even someone who's extremely wealthy who doesn't give sadaqa or extra wealth, right? He only does his wajib. He gives to his family and he gives that. Would this person be considered cheap? Well, not necessarily. So people who are, he, he says that people who have like good understanding of religion, that they'll be like, this is something that should be avoided. And that, that is actually, they'll call it stingy because they want to avoid that. They don't want to fall into it. But he's saying, shara'an, he's fine. Right, Shadan, he's actually doing whatever the things that he's obligated to do. As long as he's paying his zakat, as long as he's giving to his family and fulfilling all their rights, he's not doing anything wrong. But the problem with that is when you're when you're on that edge, it's very easy to what? To fall short. Right? It's very easy to fall short. But if you give extra, it gives you that padding room. Um and like I said, we can't call him d d uh, blameworthy. So what is that defining line? So over here we said the obligations. Right? And, and this is where Ghazali actually defines it. And I, and I think this will help answer the question, inshallah. Is the, the closer we get to the obligations, the closer we get to the obligations, the over here, this is stingy, right? So in this area. And that, that's what I forgot to write. Right? 
But over here, this is stingy. And the closer I get to the obligations, the moment I receive the obligation line, this is where I've developed that balance. Right, I'm at that balance point now. From, from stingy to greed, like to stingy to generous. So if we're looking at this, this space, this is the stingy space and this is the generous space. And this is difficult, right? It, it becomes more difficult the closer we get to this. But the moment that we get in this point, I'm now at the balance point. I'm neither stingy nor am I generous, right? I'm neither, I'm neither of these. So what do I do? I'll take that extra step now. The moment I go beyond those obligations, I've now entered the space of being generous. And he's saying here that not only is, it, it can't just be with wealth. This is, a very, this is a very strong and important condition that he puts. Just because I'm giving extra money, it doesn't make me generous. How do I actually become generous? Hmm. I have to do it for the sake of Allah, meaning that there ha I have to feel it in my heart. Right? That's where true generosity comes in. That, and sometimes I can be at this point right, where I'm, I'm training myself. And we had talked about this, right? It, it's a journey. It's, we all strive to become more generous. Some of us might be here. Some of us are here. Some of us, mashallah, are here. But everybody's at a different place and everybody's at a different level. But everybody needs to strive. That striving and that, that hard work and that effort that we're making to better ourselves, inshallah, it'll get us out of that point of being stingy and bring us into being generous. And not just that, the more I do it, what's going to happen with my heart? Right? It'll become softer. Right, my heart will become softer, and it'll become easier to give. And not only will it become easier to give, it'll actually reach a point where what? I enjoy it. Right? And that's the goal. Like, we pray to the point where I start actually enjoying prayer. Right? Give to the point where I actually enjoy giving. Like, I, I like the feeling when I, give some, when I give something. And it helps me draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because good deeds, when done with the right intention and done with the right way, they're actually motivating. Right? It actually motivates us to do more. Like we're pushed to better ourselves. We're pushed to increase. It, and it is a sign, not just a sign of sincerity, it's a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepting. But if I'm doing all this stuff, right? Like I'm doing all these things and I kind of feel like, my, like the wheels are like just kind of grinding in place, what do I need to do? I need to scale back. Because they've, it's just become like, it's just become a function. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So there's, so you, you brought a very unique example in terms of pleasure of people. Pleasure of people meaning that they're pleased with me, right? That's one type. Pleasure of people in the sense you you enjoy seeing the him happy. Right? There's a difference in that. One. I believe that there's edge at four, and one I don't. Why? Right, one is not sincere, meaning it's a riyah, right? I'm just doing it to show off because I want the people to be happy with me and I want them to say nice things about me. But if I'm doing it because I want to see him happy, why is there a reward in that? Well, sadaq is part of it. But but in this situation, it's, it's huh? It's, there's a selflessness. What else? What else is going on? What happened in that transaction? Uh, like I'm, I'm trying to, I want to make the other person happy. And making a Muslim happy is what? I forget Muslim. Making another person happy is what? It's uh, I mean, granted, like, I, we don't have control over the other people's happiness, right? But just the fact that I'm, I'm giving him, hoping that he'll be happy. I mean, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he obligates the cat, right? We have Sadqat al-Fitr where we give, like, why do we give food for Eid al-Fitr? I mean, giving money is allowed, but why? Why is food given as a preference? Huh? Well, I could help them with money too, but why? Is, why did the Prophet some define food? Oh, <laughs> no, no, that, that's a, a way to a man's heart is through his stomach. <laughs> huh? You agree with that? Allah Huh? Why? What's going on? Why food? Yes. Maybe maybe some facilitation is definitely there. But what else? Eid al-Fitr. What do we do on Fitr? 
we eat. <laughs> right? It's a day of eating. And, and basically, it's like we don't want anyone to feel. We don't feel anyone to feel left out. Right? It's like, well, I'm happy on this day and I'm eating on this day. It, I want this person to also eat on the day with me. Right? That, that's why we give food. Otherwise, the Prophet Sallallahu could have said, okay, you know, just give money. But he, he specified food because it's a day of eating. And it's an important day for everyone to work together. And it's an important day for everyone to, to be eating together because it is a day of eating. Any questions on this? No? Uh, so he closes the section uh, with a statement from the, from the Abidat where he says, Do you believe miserliness is only in the dirham and dinar? And it was said, then in what? She said, stinginess to me is in his understanding. What does that mean? Mm. So it goes back to your point. Right, stinginess, do, is, it's not, basically she's saying it's not limited to what? It's not limited to money. But it can also be in, in our dealings with others, in our perspective, and how we look at things. Right, patience. Right, there's so many things. Like, is it, is it fair for me to be like, you know, I already gave money. Right, like, and we've, we've had interactions like that. It's like, oh, you know, can I get some money? It's like, okay, yeah, here. Uh, you know, can you, can you just give me a minute? It's like, bro, I already gave you money. It's not, always, it's not the best way to interact with people. Right? That's not, it's not a, a generous mindset to have. You know, and it's important to be generous. Like, not, not just in our wealth, but it's important to be generous in our time. It's important to gen be generous, like, loving others and kindness. Like, there's no, there's no limitation on any of these things. And, and not just that. By, by giving these things, is there anything decreasing for me? Right? Is like love like a limited <laughs> amount? It's like, oh man, I gave five loves today, like I'm all out. <laughs> huh? Five likes? No. Even those are unlimited. Oh no, you can only give one, right? <laughs> you, can, you can only give one, one thumbs up per video. <clears throat> and you can't see the dislikes. <laughs> oh, bismillah. Yeah. I'm sorry? <laughs> Make multiple accounts. <laughs> no. That, that'll, be, that'll be a Russian issue. So like, <laughs> like, so she closes with this, right? It's important, like, to, to have to have the generous mindset, right? That that's what's important. Having that generous mindset is what helps create these things. Yeah, Shaheen. Mm -hmm. They're they're close, man. Like, so there some of them define like bukhal as somebody who um, who won't give to others, and then like shuhal is someone who won't even give to himself. Like, you know, what I mean, it's like they're really, you know, what I mean, like they're really like really restricted types of meanings. I think there's a huge overlap between them and I think they're pretty close in terms of uh, their, their meaning. But um, yeah, like you, I, I don't, I don't see a huge benefit in really like, it's like, you know, e extracting like the, the differences between meanings that are so close. Uh, the Conceptually, I think they're both, they're, they're both important to avoid, right? And if I understand like, well, no, well, one is stinginess, one is cupidity, one is like, you know, niggardliness, one is miserliness, like it's not, they're all they're all very close in meaning and in kind of splitting hairs and understanding what the difference is. It's like, well, I already understand like I shouldn't be stingy. And I, I think that's if if I can walk away with that, I think that's a great understanding and a way of dealing with it. Man. Any questions? No? Okay, well I guess then is it about five minutes, inshallah. But uh we will continue inshallah next week with the next uh Wallahu alam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Question? Can, debt, yes, um, but not for the one taking on the debt. <laughs> Meaning that if I loan someone money, and 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 how do, how does that look? So, when we talk about qard al hasana, when we talk about like a goodly loan, what does that look like? Um, for, for at least for me, it's like I'm loaning someone money, knowing that I'm probably not going to get the money back. Right? Not, and not necessarily in a negative way. Like I might know, like, okay, well, you know, he's in trouble, he's having problems, and there's no way this guy can pay me back. But he's asking for a loan, so what do I do? I, I give it to him. If I get it back, alhamdulillah, khair wa ni'ma. You know what I mean? It's, it's great if it works out. And if he doesn't give it back, it's no money. You know what I mean? Like, it's no, uh, no love lost. So can, can a debt be like that? Yeah, that, I mean, ideally, debt should be like that. Even in Islam, debts are not actually supposed to be a a means of earning, 
right? That, that's, it's actually a very anti-Islamic concept. Debts are not meant to be a means of earning. They're meant to be a means of empowerment. Yes. Did they get rich through begging? I have no idea. I mean, begging is a choice, right? Begging is a choice. Um, if I choose to beg and people give me, it's <clears throat> it's not looked uh, highly and proudly upon like to beg. But there's no punishment for it either. Why would somebody be punished for asking? Oh, I mean, so that will they be punished for the money or will they be punished for lying? So, then the money is secondary, uh, but they, they'd be punished for lying. Yeah. So there's no, there's only going to be a difference in the, some of the things that he mentioned. I think there's going to be a difference in terms of how it manifests based on the relationship. Um, it's going to be a difference in terms of how it manifests for somebody who's wealthy versus somebody who's poor. Um, sometimes it can manifest in different ways. Like some people, they love feeding other people, right? Like that's, that's the way that they show generosity. Um, some people, it's like their generosity is like, I want to take you around. Like, I want to show you around town. And, and they'll show for you, like, you know, different places. And they'll, like, sightsee with you and stuff. So um, I, don't think, I don't think any of those ways are wrong. And if, however, that generosity manifests, I think it's great. Right? I, don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Because does it make sense for me to, like, feed people when I myself am not, like, a huge foodie? All right? You know, but I enjoy walking people around and, like, telling them about different places. Like, okay, well, this is, this is my way of giving back. And this is my way of being generous. Um, like, uh, like there's a, there's a brother who's a taxi driver here and he, he goes to me, he's like, he's like, Sheikh, anytime you need to go anywhere, just give me a call and I'll give you a ride. You know what I mean? Like that, that's his way. That's his way of being generous, you know, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him and bless him. But, uh, there, there are different ways for all of these things to manifest. And, and sometimes we can, we can show them in different ways. So it, it, it really depends. It really depends. But, uh. I mean, that's the nice thing about being generous, right? It's not limited to something. Uh, Allah allows it to be catered to different people and manifest in different ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. So, uh, we, and we had talked about this before. It's, it's just mindset, man. There, there's nothing wrong with saving money, right? We said that there's nothing wrong with saving money. The thing is, like, how am I viewing that money? That, that's always it. Like, basically, if I'm in a situation where, alhamdulillah, like, I'm able to take care of my expenses for the next month, I should be content. I should be content. And if there's anything more than that, alhamdulillah, it's good. It's khair. There's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, and, and not just that, like, we have understanding our responsibilities as well. Uh, I actually, one of the talks I gave at ICNA was like uh, taking care of parents. And I was like, okay, well, who, who is responsible for taking care of parents? The parents themselves, right? They're the first responsibility, meaning that I should not allow my children to be the first safety net. I need to create my own safety net first. And if it fails, sure. You know, obviously at that point, uh, my children will step in. But is it fair for my children for me not to prepare for my old age? I, I don't think it's fair. And the Sharia doesn't even demand that. The Sharia, Sharia demands with my attitude toward my parents that I be what? That I be respectful and I be kind. And last time, Allah, if, if there's anything happens or if there's any situation, then what's going to happen? Then, then the responsibility falls on me. 
then, then I'm, I'm totally fine with that. But it's not fair for us to have that mindset. Like, and sometimes, and I know people, they tell their children, like, you will take care of me when I'm old. Like, you will do, you know, and it's not, it's not cool, man. I don't, I don't, I don't appreciate that. But, uh, they should. Allah <laughs> <laughs>